Today, we look at four of the Islanders' top forward prospects, talk about their skill sets, what they bring to the table, and how far off they are from joining the Islanders in the NHL. We've got that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to thank everyone for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe either on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can now follow us also on Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Lots to discuss on today's show. We're going to talk prospects today a little bit. And uh, first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to talk about on a future episode, Feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And... That includes hirings, firings, trade rumors, free agency, and the draft. It's going to be a busy offseason, and we'll have it all for you right here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. So, you know, we've been talking throughout this offseason, and even before then, every day as you know this, about this team getting younger, faster, and more skilled. And one of the things we've discussed is the fact that because of Lou Lamorello being more of a win now guy, being a, a GM who prefers to go with veterans he trusts, and that was certainly true of Barry Trotz, and for the most part, although not as drastically, it seems true of Lane Lambert. Uh, uh, Lamorello has also traded away some Number one picks, it's been, what, four years? This will be the fourth straight year. The Islanders do not have a first-round draft choice. So the farm club or the the, basically the farm system, the prospect pipeline, it's pretty bare. Uh, The hockey news during the offseason ranked the Islanders 25th, gave them a C-plus for their uh, prospects. And the Athletic ranked them 27th, and that was before the trade of Atu Ratu in the Bo Horvat deal. So we're not looking at a pipeline that is gushing with available talent that is right now NHL ready. And I think that's a big part of it. And when you look at the four players who are on the list that we're going to discuss today, I don't think any of them are really ready to contribute as full-time NHLers this coming season. Maybe one, but overall, I, I think, you know, three of these people may get some ice time this coming year. But as far as being, you know, regular full-time in the top 12 forward rotation, I, I don't necessarily think we're going to see that. And if we do, you know, I'd be it, it would require either an injury or a really incredible training camp by one of these four people. So the first one, and this is a guy that everybody has been talking about and we've been talking about as well, every dayers will know that, is William Dufour. And Dufour made his NHL debut with the Islanders this year, 
played in only one game, was on the ice for, what, six, seven minutes, was a minus two, coughed up the puck, made a bad play uh, early in the game, relatively, like early in the second period, and then he was benched for the rest of the game. It was a rather inauspicious debut in the NHL for William Dufour, and it came against the Boston Bruins, no less. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, that is our our, uh, photo on today's episode. He did play most of this season with Bridgeport, and it was Dufour's very first professional season. And in 69 games with the Bridgeport Islanders, uh, Dufour scored 21 goals, had 48 points, 51 penalty minutes, and was a minus 13. Those are solid numbers. They're not unbelievable numbers, but they're solid numbers. And look, Dufour is big. He's 6'2", 215. And we've talked about this in power forwards, and that's sort of the way he would project, tend to take a little bit longer to be NHL ready. And it's logical if you think about it. If you need to use your size to be effective and you're used to playing against teenagers and junior players or even against AHL players, you know, NHL players are bigger, stronger, faster on average across the board than AHL players. So if you need to be physical, you need to adjust. And it takes a little bit longer. Uh, Realistically, Dufour is, you know, he's a fifth round pick back in 2020. He's only, you know, 21, won't turn 22 till the middle of next season. I would say uh, that he is another year away. I'm sure he'll get another cameo or two at some point this year. But I think William Dufour and, and the Hockey News agrees he's NHL ready, according to the Hockey News in 2024, 2025. So hopefully, hopefully uh, he continues to build and and everyone wants to see him build on that great 2021-2022 season that he had with the St. John Sea Dogs in the Quebec Junior Hockey League, 56 goals and 116 points in 66 games. So, you know, that's the upside. That's what you want to see eventually from Dufour. The next guy up on the list is Matthew Maggio. And Maggio, even younger uh, than Dufour, only 20, native of Tecumseh, Ontario, six foot, 185 pounds, fifth round pick by the Islanders in 2022. Finished a great season with the Windsor Spitfires, 54 goals, 111 points, won the league MVP, and then signed a a tryout deal with the Bridgeport Islanders played three, the last three games of the season for Bridgeport and had two assists and was a plus two. Now to say three games is a very, very small sample size. Uh, I, I, I think that is uh, sort of an understatement, but Maggio really, you know, took a big step forward and, You know, look, he has yet to play more than three games of professional hockey. I think this kid has a good scoring touch. He's going to need to prove that the scoring touch he had in juniors can translate to the NHL. And I think first he's going to need to prove that it translates to the AHL. Maggio needs at least one, maybe two, or at least, you know, one and a half, two seasons in the AHL to show, you know, that he's ready to make that step up to the big time, but he looks like a fifth round steal as of now. All right. We still have two more players to discuss uh, who are offensive prospects who should eventually help this hockey team. So uh, we've got that. Plus we'll take a look at Sebastian Ajo season and whether or not he is, uh, you know, what his role will be with the Islanders next year. We've got a whole lot more still to come on today's 
Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Attention active individuals, are you tired of sacrificing comfort for style when it comes to active wear? Well, introducing Bird Dogs, the game changer in athletic shorts. Their premium shorts designed for maximum performance combined with unparalleled comfort. Bird Dogs are here to revolutionize your workout routine. They have a unique built-in liner, and they offer the ultimate support and flexibility, ensuring that you stay comfortable during even the most intense workouts. And here's the best part. Bird Dogs are more than just workout gear. They're versatile enough to take you from the gym to the street without skipping a beat. Bird Dogs are made with premium breathable fabric. They keep you cool and dry throughout all of your activities, whether you're on the trail, at the gym, or just lounging around, bird dogs are the shorts you've been waiting for. Visit birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter promo code locked on NHL. You'll get a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Bird dogs, where style meets comfort and performance meets perfection, get yours and unleash your true potential. So, a couple more prospects to look at as we look at the Islanders' top offensive prospects. And believe me, these four, they're not in any particular order at this point. Uh, Got to talk about Alex Jeffries, the left wing uh, native of Lunenburg, Massachusetts. He's 21. He'll turn 22 in November, so fairly early in the upcoming season. He's a fourth-round pick by the Isles back in 2020, six-foot, 195 pounds. He is going to enter his senior season at Merrimack College. And last year, he had 14 goals and 41 points in 38 games. So better than a point a game player. He was a plus nine in those 38 games. And again, you know, Jeffries. He was one of the elite offensive players on Merrimack. And, you know, here's what I sort of expect from Jeffries. He's more of a playmaker than a shooter. But the the basic thing is this. Jeffries is the kind of player, if he goes back as expected for that senior year, he will be closer to being NHL ready maybe than some of these other players because he's a little older and he's got the four years of college experience. The odds are he signs a pro contract as soon as the Merrimack college season is over and then finishes the season either in the AHL with the Bridgeport Islanders or in the NHL with the New York Islanders. Although I'll put it to you this way, the only way he probably is in the NHL is if there are injuries He absolutely blows everybody away at Merrimack or the Islanders are just out of contention and looking to bring in some young players for the last few games of the season to see what he could do. Uh, I think Jeffries could be a good playmaking wing, Uh, maybe somebody who eventually could help Bo Horvat on a certain level. But again, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's see how he adjusts from college, how he does in his last year in college, and then how he adjusts to the pro game. Pro game, more physical, uh, different style usually than the college game, so it should be interesting. And the fourth and final prospect that we are talking about here is Ruslan Iskakov, the Moscow native originally drafted by the Islanders back in 2008 in the second round and Iskakov had his first pro season here in North America last year played in 69 games had 17 goals and 51 points with the Bridgeport Islanders 50 penalty minutes Iskakov got off to a very good start kind of slumped in the middle and then stabilized his game at the end of the season um You like the skill that he brings to the table. The big concern, he's 5'9", 165 pounds. Now, in the AHL, he proved that he was capable of getting the job done. Played two seasons at the University of Connecticut. 
So we know he, you know, he's not a complete stranger to the North American game, but the size is the big concern. Iskakov, probably the most or the closest to being NHL ready out of these four players. But will Lou Lamorello and will Lane Lambert trust that a five foot nine, 165 pound player? And remember, that's what they list him as. Usually they're a little generous with these numbers, but will they be able to trust that he can play the NHL game and do it the right way? Uh, this will be the last year of his uh entry-level contract. He will be a restricted free agent after the 2023-2024 season. I think he gets a long look in training camp, but, you know, he'll really have to impress. And he had a good training camp last year, got sent down anyway. This is a chance. Out of all the players, Iskakov could be the one who could possibly crack the NHL roster this year. Here's the drawback, though. Although he has also played on the wing, occasionally, Iskakov is a center. And the Islanders have five NHL caliber centers right now in Horvat, Barzal, Pajot, Nelson, and Sezikis. And, you know, you want the skill of Iskakov you want the hands that he brings to the table, the passing ability that he brings to the table. If he was a wing, I think he'd have a better chance of cracking the lineup. Now, Iskakov, you know, a lot could happen between now and the end of training camp, whether it's a trade or whether it's a retirement or whether it's a move from one position to another. A lot of possible things are on the table right now. But, you know, Iskakov was not called up at all this year. A lot of people were calling for it. And I think, number one, he'll get a chance. He'll get a long look in the preseason, number one. And number two, I think, uh, again, assuming he stays healthy. And then number two, I think this year, if injuries hit, Iskakov is near the top of the list as far as players who the Islanders would recall. All right, we've got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Sebastian Ajo, the Islanders' Sebastian Ajo. How was his season? Did he meet expectations? What is his future like with the Islanders? We're going to break that down, that and a whole lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. So we look at Sebastian Ajo, the Swedish native, originally drafted by the Isles in the fifth round in 2017. Ajo, 27 years old, turned 27 in February, and really played his first full NHL season this year. He was behind Robin Sallow on the depth chart at the very beginning of the season, but after, what, four or five games, Ajo took over the sixth defenseman spot and pretty much held down that position for the rest of the year. In 71 games, Ajo, five goals, 23 points. He was a plus nine and had only 22 penalty minutes. And here's, here's the thing about Ajo. I like what he can bring you offensively. Uh, you know, he only averaged 16 minutes and 46 seconds of ice time. So, you know, he was sort of the lowest guy on the totem pole when it came to ice time, unless you had, you know, a Parker Weatherspoon or a Samuel Bolduc also in the lineup. They, you know, the guys who were just called up for a game or two or three to, to try to fill in when other players were injured. So, you know, he really was the sixth defenseman most of the season for the Islanders, but people expected him to be the seventh. So he did take a step up in that respect. And look, Ajo is pretty good at passing the puck, moving the puck. Um, he did help on the second power play unit, had a pair of power play 
assist this year. And, you know, in game six of the series against Carolina, they moved Aho to power play one. And I think he did a better job as the quarterback of the power play than Noah Dobson had done up until that point. Now, I know it's a low bar based on how absolutely bad that power play was over the course of the playoffs and most of the season. But uh, Aho did bring a little bit of a spark, at least, in that last game. He had 69 block shots in 71 games, so he's not afraid of that kind of a play. Only 38 hits, though, the physical side of the game, not his forte. And that's the big drawback. Aho is generously listed at 5'10", 186 pounds. But it's the lack of size that really limits what he can do defensively. I think Aho grew as a defenseman positionally over the course of this past season. He was smarter positionally uh, as the season went on. But even so, he is not ever going to be more than an average defensive defenseman at best, just because he's giving away 25, 20, 25 pounds to a lot of these forwards who he's trying to cover. And he's giving away size and height. And it just makes it tough sometimes for him to win puck battles along the boards. And it, it just limits what he's capable of doing. And yeah, there are little things you could learn to try to improve, and Aho has learned some of them. But again, he's not a prospect anymore. He's 27. He's in his prime. This is more or less what Sebastian Aho is going to be. And while I feel he can be an asset on the power play, and I think he should get a chance to do more on the power play in training camp. Uh, and hopefully that the system, uh, how they operate on the power play changes as well. But Aho really will need to prove himself. And just, I'm just concerned that if he is your sixth defenseman, you can't have another vulnerable defenseman in their own zone in your top six. Having Aho and Dobson out on the ice at the same time in the second half of last year, put the Islanders behind the eight ball in many games. And the fact that Lane Lambert paired the two of them together on, you know, for many, many games as well, to me was too much of a defensive liability in one pair. So I think Aho comes back, competes for the sixth, maybe, you know, the sixth defense spot again. Uh, and, and then the question is, is he the six? or the seven, I can't see him being anything more than this, the, you know, the five, really, he's a third pair guy with a role possibly on the power play. The salary, this is the last year of his contract coming up, $825,000 salary uh, and cap hit, and then he's an unrestricted free agent. So clearly for Ajo, the left-handed shot, this is a critical year and he has every uh, bit of motivation to keep improving his game and to earn that next contract, whether it's with the Islanders or somewhere else. So we'll see how that plays out for Sebastian Ajo. I think he's back in training camp, and I think he he battles for that sixth spot. But if the Islanders can get that better puck-moving defenseman that we've talked about, I'm perfectly comfortable with Aho being the seventh defenseman on this roster. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And uh, Saturday will be the 56th birthday of former Islanders defenseman Bob Beers. Beers, a 10th round pick of the Bruins back in 1985, played at the University of Maine for three seasons after one year at Northern Arizona University, and then made his NHL debut with the Bruins in the 1989-90 season. He's a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, played for the Bruins, the Lightning, the Oilers, and then joined the Islanders for the 94-95 season, split the 96-97 season, uh, excuse me, 
the 95-96 season with the Isles, and then 96-97 split between the Providence Bruins of the AHL and the Boston Bruins. He played in 258 career NHL games, 28 goals, 107 points, 225 penalty minutes. You could add 21 playoff games, but none of those were with the Islanders. And with the Isles, you know, he was never really a full-time kind of a player. Played 22 games in 94-95. And remember, that was a lockout shortened year. Two goals, nine points. One of his best moments as an Islander, though, April 7th, 1995, at Madison Square Garden. Islanders taking on the Rangers. And after the Rangers went up two to nothing on goals by Alex Kovalov and Pat Verbeek, Bob Beers potted a power play goal with Matthew Schneider and Ray Ferraro getting the assist to make it two to one. Islanders, that started a comeback. And the Islanders won the game four to three. Tommy Soderstrom, 31 saves for the win. But for Bob Beers, he was a plus, uh, excuse me, he had a goal on his only shot and it came on the power play, beating Mike Richter and giving the Islanders a four to three win at Madison Square Garden. So again, happy birthday to Bob Beers. Only briefly an Islander, but had some pretty good games in the process. Bob Beers is our Islanders birthday of the day. Hard to believe this week is coming to a close. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is on Monday. We continue our player by player look at the New York Islanders. Simon Holmstrom is our focus on Monday. And maybe, just maybe, we'll find out when we're going to hear from Lou and Lane. And uh, we'll talk about that plus a whole lot more. So join us on Monday for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.